Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our API testing with Rust Assured and Cucumber course. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with POST in Rust Assured with Cucumber scenario. So in our last video, we discussed how we can create reusable utility for POST and we also saw how we can perform the POST operation with the BDD based Rust Assured API. But today we are going to write a scenario for the post with body and path parameter, something like this. So we are going to write a scenario where we're going to verify the post operation for the profile that we saw in our previous video. And here, as you can see, we have a scenario where I have written like, given I perform a post operation for the post slash profile number slash profile with body. And as you remember in our previous videos, we were discussing about how we can use the path parameter where we write the path parameter in a curly brace. And then the curly brace is something which is going to replace the curly brace key into the value that we are looking for. So in this case, what I have did is the profile number is the key and the value which I'm going to be replacing that is going to be the value that I have mentioned here in the data table. So we have to handle the situation in the step definition. So the step definition implementation is going to have that particular replacement option. But this is the URL that we are going to be working with for the path parameter. And the body is going to have a name as Sam's. So if we pass the name as Sam's, then it is going to replace that value in there. And then I should see the body name has the value as Sam's, not Sam. Right, So if this is like a negative scenario, so I'm just expecting it to be SAM. So the test is going to fail. So if we want to verify the SAMs, then it should be SAMs in here. Right. So this is the scenario that we're going to be working today for the body and path parameter verification. And the step definition implementation is going to be looking something like this. As you can see, since we are going to use the data table, we have to change the data table's table to raw. And once again, these things we have already discussed in our Cucumber with Selenium course. It's available in YouTube for free as well as in Udemy. It's available for free. So please go ahead and watch there. And this is exactly how we discussed over there as well. So there is a variable called table dot raw. So with this, we can retrieve the table value. Like this one is like first row and we're going to take the first column value, second row and first column value. And this one is like second row and the second column value because it's a zero based index. So that's why the one is second in here and zero is the first one in here, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to set the body something like name. And similarly, I'm going to set the path parameter as the profile number. So the profile is going to be the one that we have mentioned in the cucumber scenario, something like this one, right? And then we are going to perform the post operation using the method that we wrote in our previous video. So please go ahead and watch the previous video. Only then you can understand what we're really talking about here. Because in that video, we saw how we can work the real time example of a real application, which is nothing but the fake JSON server where we were doing all those stuffs. We also saw manually how we can generate a profile data for that. Right. So once the post operation is done, you should be seeing the body which has the name as Sam in there. So this is exactly what we'll be discussing in our this video. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. All right. So this is the same project that we have been working so long in our course. And as you can see, our code has been starting to evolve it a little bit. But this is not the thing yet. We are going to be refactoring the code a lot more like a framework maybe. And that framework is going to handle all the different kinds of operation like post, get, delete, patch, put everything in one single method. And we are going to make this particular rest assured extension a lot more reusable so that you can start using that in your work day to day activities much easily without any hesitation. All right, so as that said, I'm going to start writing the scenario in here. The scenario is going to be pretty much like how we saw in the slide. It's going to look something like this. So we're going to have a scenario called verify post operation for profile. And you can see the post operation URL is this one. As discussed in our previous video, we are going to be doing exactly the same thing. If I could bring the postman here and if you could recollect what it what we did in our previous video, we did the post with two for the profile 
and the body had name as Jacob. If it is, then if I send it, you can see it's going to return me Jacob and two. So if I put Sam in here, and if I do a send, it's going to return you Sam and the post ID, which is going to be two, right? This is exactly what we'll be doing in here as well. So this is dynamic. This has to change every time. So I'm going to change that from the data table and then we're going to be verifying it. All right. So the implementation part is again, very, very simple. All we're going to do is to start implementing the step definitions. All right. Over here, we're going to be start writing the code. So the first thing is the URL and then we're going to have a data table which is nothing but the table. And then we're going to be writing the Cucumber uh, data retrieval formation, which is going to be from var data is equal to table dot ra. So this method is going to be something which is going to retrieve the data for us. And then we're going to set the body here. So once again, the body is something that you're going to be setting using the hash map. And the hash map I'm going to pass is going to be string of string and this is the body of new hash map. And then I'm going to put the value in here. So the value for the body is going to be the name as Sam, right? So I'm going to be passing the name and the value Sam is something which is going to be coming from the data, which is nothing but this particular data of the data table. So that's why I'm going to be using the data dot get method. And again, this index is going to be zero based and this is number one. So this is zero row, and this is first row. So first row and I'm going to be getting the first column value, which is going to be zero, right? There you go. And then we need to create the params. So the path parameter is something which we need to set as well. And once again, it's going to be a hash map and I'm going to be setting the string of string, which is going to be path params. It's equal to new of hash map. And then the path param dot, we're going to do something called as put. And here, as you can see, we're going to replace this particular profile number. That's why it should be in the key. Make sure this profile number key is same as the one that you have specified in the URL. Let's say if it replaces that, it's not gonna work, right? This is exactly how we discussed in our previous videos. If you could recollect from the BDD styled method, we also discussed about that over here for performing the path parameter in the get operation, right? This is exactly this. So I'm gonna be doing that. And for the value, once again, I'm just going to be using the first one, which is going to be returning me true in two in here. All right, that's the path param. And then we're going to perform the post operation. So perform post operation. So for that, I'm going to be calling the rest assured extension dot post ops with path param. And then here I'm going to be passing the URL path params and finally the body. Very, very simple. So simple it is, isn't it? And then we're going to be getting the response. Oops, the response is something which we already have, the static variable that we created in our previous videos. So I'm just being calling that. I'm going to save it. Right. And we are going to be getting some error here. I'll probably show you while I try to debug this code so that you can have a clear understanding of what I'm really talking about. So I'm just going to run the debugging mode so you can see all the values going to be set in here and it has come to this particular method. I'm just going to do an F8, F8 here, and then it's going to be sitting into this particular block. Uh, let's see the valid expression, valid expression here. You can see it's all looking good, but once it comes to this particular request post of new URI, you are going to get some sort of error, something like URI syntax uh, exception. There you go, because it is an illegal character in the path that is nothing but the curly braces. So make sure your URI syntax exception has been removed. You can either have something like an exception or something like that, or 
you can even ignore that because this URI syntax exception can easily happen. So I would probably recommend you not having this for now. And you can probably have something like that method signature. And you can remove this guy from here, which is going to be more sensible. So there you go. And now if I try to debug again, I'm not really going to be uh, running that because we don't really believe in our code because at the first instance we have to make sure that our code actually works so I'm just gonna be leaving it in here I'm going to be doing an F8 and F8 here let's also pull in our web server so that you can see what's really happening so this is our web server guy so I'm just gonna be keeping this guy uh, side by side so maybe if, you, if I just keep it over here you can see what's really happening Hmm, all right, so let me keep them side by side. Cool. And now if I just do an F8 again, you can see that we are still getting an illegal exception. The reason is because of the new URI. So I probably would say that instead of using the new URI and throws this exception, it's better to safely use the URI as a string. And that's why there is an option as an overloaded parameter for the post that you can also pass a string instead of an URI something like that right so the string is more than enough which means we don't really have to have this new URI syntax exception and now if I try to debug this F8 again and you can see that it is going to be creating a new URL request in here which is a new post as you can see it has come in and I should see some response this time so let's see what's the response. So evaluate expression. Let's see what's the response. So I can get the body in here and then we need to print it. See, as I said, we can use this print method very easily for the debugging purpose. So I could see with a print method, I could see the name as Sam's in here, which means our code is actually working, which is really, really a good news. So now I can just do a JSON path dot get of name so that I can get Sam's in here so that I can verify it very quickly without any problem so I'm just going to be stopping our execution because we actually have to implement the uh, scenario uh, for this particular step definition alt enter create step definition and here I'm just going to be pasting this particular code and the response is something which is available for us then let's also do the assert that right pretty much like how we did earlier for the asset that right I'm gonna be doing that as well has item of I guess it is Sam's so instead of Karthi KK the hard-coded value we're gonna be passing the name from the step definition so let's do that cool and I'm gonna quickly run this now Let's see what is the result for the output. I guess it will fail. There you go. So instead of having the cast exception with an array, what we can do is we can use something like uh, an equal to something like that, which is going to compare correctly with this particular value. And let's also turn this guy to Sam's because uh, it's not Sam. So now if I try to run this scenario, Let's see what's going to happen basically. So it should either pass. There you go. And it has got completed. Just really cool. So now if I try to make this as Sam and we expect it to be Sam's or something like that. So the test should eventually fail. As you can see in here, we're expecting it to be Sam's, but the actual value is Sam, right? Because that's what we are passing in. So this is how we can verify with the post and the path parameter and body parameter together using a very very super simple scenario in here right so we can keep on extending this to any level we want and that's what i said during the initial starting of this course that the rest assured api by itself is like your imagination to its limit so you can extend it to any level you want because there are so many different libraries inbuilt available within 
rest assured as you can see here there are so many apache components so many uh, hamcrest api libraries and so many things available to perform so many things of operations it's not limited to a very small tool or very complex tool that you have in the market something like catalan studio which is very very specific to certain pieces of the api testing but here this is more vast and expanded so that whatever imagination that you put in you can keep on extending it to any level that you want so that's it guys this is how you can perform the post operation with path parameter and the body parameter in our next video we'll discuss a very very super simple delete operation followed by put on patch and then we'll start working with authentication and also we'll start working by designing a framework for our complete code so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day